Hi folks, I'm Alan Watts of Cutting Through the Matrix. It's April 24th, 2016. And uh, this is not a long talk today because of all the craziness that's happened here. But it's to let you know that I'm still uh, kind of alive, I suppose. And uh, to let you know what's kind of happened and transpired in this... uh, this last crazy while But I just got back from the hospital It's been about nine days there And I think the last time I mentioned to you How sick I was and everything else And how bad I felt at the time I was going to check myself into the hospital But I didn't have time to Because um, uh, I guess I guess it was um it was the morning of the 15th anyway I, I've been coughing, coughing all night But the strangest cough was like a Almost like a whooping cough Where all the air is going out and out and out and, and, and you can't get time to get breath in the way But it's like it's commandeered your whole system And out and out and out Well eventually, uh, as I say On the 15th in the morning uh, <laughs> I saw bits of my tissue going f- flying out of my mouth uh, uh, Bright red, red blood, the whole thing And that was it, I was hemorrhaging like crazy And, um, and of course I was suffocating as well So 911 time And the paramedics came and did an amazing thing To get me, get me out of here I didn't think I'd get there at all I, I didn't expect to to arrive at the hospital But I did And um, They went into their usual action there And took a, Did different tests And Found out I had several uh, Other infections At the same time <laughs> Bacterial As well as the viral and, and a strange fungal infection As well which had even got into the lungs and um, this created when this uh, uh, this this uh, virologist and so on. So it's a perfect storm. Uh, the, the combination of them was a perfect storm. And uh, so they hit me with the right intravenous antibiotics. And uh, and I was in there for a while, just getting other tests, etc. I don't think there's a place in, in my hands at all where. Where I didn't have IV and drips and so on going in and blood getting taken out, but I, I'm severely anemic yet because of all the blood I lost. And they didn't put me on a blood replacement of any kind, so uh, I'm tired. I mean, really tired. And you, you, uh, dropping off during uh, during the hospital during a certain test, you would. You, you just find yourself dropping off and uh, couldn't help you know, stop yourself or anything else. Uh, the whole time has been like some kind of surreal, a very surreal uh, dream or something. But it was very real indeed. Um, so luckily I had someone again who, who popped in. And took care of Hamish as best he could, even though he's dying. Uh, well, I was away, and that's a big relief that someone could pop in. Uh, things like that. And I'm very selective in who I, I choose to because I don't want a voice to the world on my behalf. You have people you can trust to take care of these things. And so I'm home for. Who knows, I can go right back in again I'm surprised they let me out well, Actually, they said I've been in for an awful long time Because the damage has been done already But it's touch and go, that's what happens And uh, you don't push it And you expect people to give you some space as well While you try and get back on your feet again So to speak, well, literally as well <laughs> uh, So I'd appreciate everybody out there and um, 
you know, don't. There are some people who always put their phones on automatic dial. They'll just dial all day, day and night long. And as soon as I plug my phone in to phone out for something, it's awfully important. I can't get, I can't get, any, I can't get what I need to do done. You know, that's that's not polite, and that's not that's not respectful. It's also very dangerous. Uh, as you can hear, I'm a bit breathless as well because. Uh, there's so much damage done, as I say, it's going take a while to clear this up, if it does clear up, hopefully, and uh, I'll have to work on that as well, but uh, I appreciate the people who've, who've kept me in their thoughts and so on, it's awfully important um, uh, to, to keep you, keep, keep people in your thoughts and and I, I just know that people had certainly me had me in their thoughts because otherwise I should have been down under basically very very quickly. I really didn't expect to <laughs> to, to get back here or even to make it to the hospital in Sudbury. I really didn't think so when I saw that uh, arterial blood f- pumping out there. Uh, it's not a pleasant thing to see. But it was a perfect storm, as I say. And I guess the viral one had to do this tenderizer to the meat. And bang, away it went. Phew. Quite a story, eh? But that's just the condensed version. So uh, give me time, and uh, hopefully I, I can get back on my feet and all that. I can continue doing what, I'm, what I, I've always done. And pump out the information to you. I certainly had lots of thoughts in the hospital, you know, because uh, you experience other parts of the system and at close quarters, and you can examine it up up close and realize how all pervasive and extensive the system is. But anyway, it stopped worrying so much. Um, I will say reports of my death have been greatly exaggerated, although I had this one was <laughs> darn close to the mark and that's the scary part about it and hopefully um, I'll, hopefully I'll have better news for you uh, for, for next week and in the meantime I'm going to try to get a bigger machine to give me an auction when required I can't afford the, the one uh, that most folk get most folk get them for free you know and in the state basically pays the I didn't call that fight for some reason. So I've got a little tiny thing, which is still about 240-odd bucks a month for a very small output of oxygen. And I certainly need it for temporarily until uh, till I can build up good tissue, etc. And from poor old Hamish, who's... Uh, Who's been hanging on? And myself. That's good night to me. Your God, your gods go with you. <laughs>